Now we've gotten to the student and we're going to talk about five things when it comes to the student. We're going to talk about language learning, the basics. We're going to talk about an immersion environment. We're going to talk about parents' expectations. We're also going to talk about student demographics and then something I call learning activation. Getting right into it, let's talk about the basics or fundamentals of learning a language. And what we need to understand is that language is something that is used to send a message, okay? So it goes from a sender to a receiver. When I see someone in the morning and I say, hello, good morning, I'm sending sort of a message, they respond with, hi, good morning. Message sent, message received, message sent back, message received. So basically a language is a means of communication from sender to a receiver. We have verbal forms of communication and we have non-verbal forms of communication. For example, something like sign language is a non-verbal form of communication and hence the signs. We also have verbal communications where voices come in, where a sound has to be made. And when we talk about verbal audible communication, it is ideally said that a person can make about 600 consonant sounds and also about 200 vowel sounds. So that's a total of about 800 sounds that a person can make. I haven't personally ver verified all of these, but according to research, that is the data, data that we have. So for instance, the English language. The English language has its own consonants and its own vowel sounds. That's why we learn A, B, C, D up to Z, because we are trying to figure out which of the sounds that a person can make actually belong to the English language. You can meet another person and they speak Chinese and they speak Spanish and they speak French and you're a person who speaks English and you can tell that, wait, this particular sound that's in correspond with the English language because you have been able to decode the sound pattern that belongs to the English language. And it is said that ideally there are about 44 phonemes. So a phoneme is like the, the, the fundamental unit of a sound. So k, d, e, these are all phonemes, okay? So uh, the English language has 44 of these that go with it. And that's why we do our A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, because a is one of them, b is one, k is one. These are all phonemes. And it's 44, although there are 26 characters, because you're going to add some things like the vowel. A lot of the vowel sounds have two, two, two sounds, right? We have a short sound that is a, and we have a long sound that is a. And we have certain things like diagraphs, for instance, you have your O, O together that's going to give you O, or you have your E, E that's going to give you E, or you have your C, H that's going to give you CH. These are all sounds that are associated with the English language. We need to understand these because when you meet that person you are going to teach, they have already learned a particular sound pattern for their native language. And in trying to learn your language, they are going to make mistakes associating some of those sounds with the language you're trying to teach them. So for instance, this is a common thing. When you're teaching kids new words, when you teach something like fish, they are probably going to say fish because of the way the Chinese language sounds. Chinese language is such that there's barely sounds that are isolated and singular. And what I mean by that is, so for instance, if you take something like g, which we say in the English language, that's, that's a single unit. But in the Chinese language, with the Chinese phoneme, it's going to sound something like g. So when you teach the child to say dog, because they already know g from their, their native language, they are going to say dog, right? They're going to mix it up. And you need to know this because when you teach someone for a whole year, and after a whole year, they are still pronouncing words in a way that sounds very just like their native language, then it means you are omitting something 
in your teaching and parents and your school and everyone is going to have like raised eyebrows when a student says a word. So you need to work on transforming the phonemes that you need to work on helping them identify the sound pattern that comes with their English language.